this video, we will discuss request preprocessing. We'll also talk about rule sets, how to create them, and how to deploy them to Dynamic Media Classic. For this discussion, we assume that you are familiar with Dynamic Media Classic requests and XML files. Dynamic Media Classic provides a mechanism for preprocessing requests before they are parsed and processed. Here is a typical Dynamic Media Classic request that produces an image. The request is defined by the URL. This simple request specifies the company name, asset ID, width, response mode, and USM parameters. Request preprocessing is configured through a set of rules defined in an XML file. We call this a rule set, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Request preprocessing rules can modify the path and query portions of requests before they are processed by the Dynamic Media Classic parser, including manipulating the path, adding commands, changing command values, and applying templates or macros. Rules can also be used to configure request obfuscation, watermarking, as well as limiting service to specific client IP addresses. Request preprocessing can be used to make URLs more SEO friendly, rewrite URLs for brand consistency, add default images for certain non-standard criteria, set an image to be shown if a certain URL or set of parameters is used, and enable customization of default image. In fact, you can do a lot of creative things with request preprocessing but generally they are used to perform necessary modifications to the request for technical reasons. Now let's talk more about rule sets. A rule set is an XML file that conforms to a schema and contains a set of rules. This file illustrates the general structure of a rule set. I've created this rule set in the text editor and named it myruleset.xml. Let's look at the structure of this XML file. The rule element is named rule set and contains a collection of rules. This rule set contains three rules, each contained within a rule element. I have added an optional attribute to the rule element called name. I can use this to describe the rule. For example, the first rule is defined to flip an image horizontally when the ID matches the expression. Each rule contains some sub-elements. In this example, each rule contains an expression element and a substitution element. The expression is used to match a request. The substitution is used to modify a request. There are two other elements that can be used in a rule, and they are address filter and header. They are not used in this example. The address filter is used to limit the response to a set of IP addresses. The header can be used to add or modify HTTP response headers. Here is an example of a rule set that contains three rules. Regular expressions are used to match the incoming request. If the request matches the rule, the request is substituted with the regular expression and the substitution element. You will need to learn about Java regular expressions in order to match your requests and substitute them. There are many resources available online to help you with this, or you can work with a developer to help create them. In the first rule, the expression is defined to match any image ending in underscore LR. If the image name matches, it will be replaced with a command to flip the image from left to right and set the quality. This is defined in the regular expression specified in the substitution element. Notice the question mark is escaped with a backslash so that it will not be interpreted as part of the substitution regular expression. I have added two other rules that do similar things. You can add as many rules into the rule set as you need. You upload your rule set in the same way you would upload any other asset. Once you upload it, you will also want to be sure to publish it. Once you upload and publish your rule set, you must specify it in the Publish Setup. Go to Setup, Application Setup, Publish Setup, and then Image Server. Under Catalog Management, find the Rule Set Definition File Path, and then click the Select button. Now select your Rule Set and click Select. We can now test our Rule Set. 
Now let's test our rule set. Here is a simple request. It displays an image of the city of Berlin. However, I'd like to turn the city upside down. I will use our rule set to accomplish that. The rule indicates that if the image name ends in underscore UD, it will be flipped upside down. Here we can see that my rule set has worked. The image was flipped upside down. I simply added the underscore UD to the end of the image name. The request preprocessor has detected that the image name matched the expression in my rule and has substituted the commands that are defined in my substitution element. If you are having problems getting a rule to work, you can use a special command to test it. With this request, I have asked Dynamic Media Classic to report on my request using the debug info command and setting it to rule set. The information returned indicates that my rule was matched and transformed. My rule functioned as expected. Let's look at another example of how rule sets can be used to help with SEO. The URL outlined in red represents a typical image request. If we look at the URL, we can see that the request specifies that an image with a name of Adobe Stock underscore 89804265 is to be requested and an image preset named Standard Sharpening is to be applied. This request is perfectly valid and produces the image of this beautiful temple in Tokyo. However, the URL is not optimal for search engine optimization. There are a couple of things that could be improved to get better search engine results. First of all, there is no indication from this URL that we are requesting an image. And secondly, there is no indication that this is a photo taken in Tokyo. Let's see how we could use a rule set to address these issues. What we'd like to do is create a rule that would allow us to use an SEO-friendly URL that provides more information about our request to the web crawlers that will index our image and make it available to search results. On top is our original URL. In our SEO-friendly URL below, notice that we now have a very standard URL request for an image. There are no longer any URL modifiers. We no longer need to use the question mark to introduce the image preset variable, and we no longer need to use dollar signs to surround the image preset name. First of all, we have included the image preset name, standard sharpening, as part of the URL path. We do not need to use the dollar signs. Secondly, we have included Tokyo hyphen as part of the image name. This is important for SEO because it will indicate that this is an image related to the city of Tokyo. Thirdly, we have a .jpg extension at the end of our image name. This clearly indicates to the web crawler that this is a request for an image. The end result is that we have a very standard URL that is familiar to web crawlers, indicating that we are requesting an image related to Tokyo. To accomplish this, we will create a new rule that will accept our SEO-friendly URL and convert it back to our original URL so that the Dynamic Media Classic can parse it and deliver our image. The web crawler will see our SEO-friendly URL and gather useful information that will help to improve search results. But we will transform the request to a form that Dynamic Media understands in order to deliver our image. Let's take a look at the expression and break it down. The caret and the dollar sign have special meaning. The caret indicates the beginning of the part of our URL before the last slash, and the dollar sign indicates the end of it. In other words, we are looking for an image preset name, followed by a slash, then followed by a hyphenated image name ending in .jpg. The three items surrounded by parentheses indicate that we are looking for three groups of text that may contain any characters. The dot asterisk inside the parenthesis is special code that means to match any text. The parentheses also have special meaning. They allow us to refer to the matching text by number, which we will use in the substitution element. Let's look at that now. In the substitution element, we will reconstruct our original URL. $1 one 
is in orange. It will refer to the first set of characters we matched in our expression. In other words, it is the image preset name. Dollar sign three is in red. It is the original name of our image, or in other words, the asset ID. Dollar sign two is the descriptive part of our image, in this case, Tokyo. We do not use dollar sign two in our substitution. It will be removed from the request as well as the hyphen. So again, in our example, dollar sign one in orange will match our image preset, standard sharpening. Dollar sign three in red will match our image name, Adobe Stock underscore 89804265. And dollar sign two will match our image description, in this case, Tokyo, but it will be removed in the substitution. After the rule is applied, the substitution will produce our original URL. You can see that we have added the mandatory question mark and dollar signs surrounding our image preset name. Those are indicated in blue. And in our substitution, we have added a backslash in front of the dollar signs so that the dollar signs are not treated as special characters by the regular expression parser, which we do not want. The end result is that we have created a rule that allows us to use an SEO-friendly URL, which will be converted to a standard dynamic media URL that will be understood by the image server. To verify this, I can use a special request to test my rule set. I have added a URL parameter debug underscore info and set it to rule set. The output indicates that the expression I created in my rule was matched and the URL was transformed as expected. You can use this technique to develop and test your own rule sets. If you would like to learn more about rule sets, you can check out these additional resources.